is passed around. What are your thoughts about Christmas? With us now is Matty Lewis, who is a parent. He's also a member of uh, Yorkie Dads. Good morning, Matty. Good morning, Jonathan. How are you? Not so bad, thank you. What are your thoughts about Christmas? Uh, should we have a, a, an easing of the lockdown rules over Christmas? Yeah, I think I think it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because uh, everyone's in different, everyone's got different scenarios and different outlooks. So while we debate this, it's important to sort of understand everyone else's point of view. It's everyone's going to have a different opinion on this. But um, for me personally, I've I've got a, a little boy who's four. Uh, myself and his mum are separated, so. Obviously, it's important for me. I want to see him uh, over the Christmas period. But at the same time, I've got my family uh, who live an hour away. So my mum, my grand, my brother and my nephew. So I've got two households that really that I would want to be going to. So um, my my personal opinion is that while I absolutely would, would give everything to see those family members, I also understand the severity of the virus and what we don't want is to, A, put people at risk and B, um, you know, be looking at Christmas 2021 also still struggling to, to do with the virus. So I think it's important that we, we're we prepared to make sacrifices and sort of understand that it's, it's not going to be forever. Mm. I mean, that's a... Many people would say that is a hugely responsible attitude to take to it all. The fear has got to be that some people will go, ah, well, it doesn't matter if we just do it because, mm. you know, we're not going to... The difficulty is people are going to be faced with choices. If you're told you can only meet with a certain number of people from a very restricted number of households, it cuts down the number of people you can meet and you're going to have to make a decision. So do we see mum and dad? Do we see former partner do we see auntie and uncle uh, do we see brothers and sisters we're gonna some people are actually gonna have to say if the rules stay in place i'm sorry but we can't see you because we're seeing somebody else and that is a really tough thing to say in a family circle isn't it it is and i suppose i, I think it just boils down to so something with your kid and something that you know we, we've just launched a, a, a blog cast called the positivity hub and i think a lot of the topical conversations we have within within this podcast is is about exactly these things to try and get people to understand how you can have conversations with people and better understand it. And, and one of the conversations we're having on tonight's uh, episode is that we, while we're going to have to have these tough conversations, saying, "Yeah, I'm, I'm essentially going to have to choose this household over another," it's going to be a this isn't forever. You know, um, I'd rather not come to your household because of the the, the vulnerable family member that lives there. You know, we've got to think about safety. We've got to think about each other. So it's about having the right conversations and and almost putting the, the positive spin on it. And um, listen, we 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 constantly have conversations about loneliness and 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 how much people struggle with with their mental health. And and on, it, today is International Men's Day as well. It's important to mention that. And you know, guys that live on their own and that see family over Christmas, it's it's a hugely big issue to them. And this could, this could be a real a real challenge if they can't go to another household. But I think having the right conversations, the right understanding, and, and the right mentality about it is, is going to be key to getting through it. Some people, of course, are going to say things like, uh, well, this could be so-and-so's last Christmas, you know? They've got a a very elderly Mm. relative, maybe somebody who's not too well in their health anyway. It could be their last Christmas. Mm. So hang it, come what may, we're going to see them and we don't care whether we break the rules or not. And you can sort of understand the emotional urge to do Mm. that. On the flip side, you can't understand the, the sort of the the logic of that in terms of, yeah. of of loving someone and caring about their health. Yeah, that's it, and that's specu- speculator, isn't it? It's, it's you know saying you know this this could be the last Christmas, and and it, and indeed it's been like a hugely challenging year for them. And I, and I know we've heard the the elderly when they've been interviewed saying you know almost joviently this this you know I've not got long left. I don't want to be stuck in my house all the time, and I, I understand that. I think the the key thing to remember is that. You know, uh, we, you can be asymptomatic and enter a household, and eff- effectively you might infect them, and then they've got weeks. And I think, you know, we've we've just got to look at the bigger picture sometimes. So, although I totally appreciate everyone's point of view, I do think that we we have to be sensible with it. We have to stick to the guidelines. We have to protect our loved ones. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, hopefully we'll be able to go into one household at the very least. But technology as well we've got to be blessed with it you know i know it's not the same over facetime and stuff like that but there's always options isn't there there is matty as ever good to speak to you happy and did you, you say it was in. world men's day uh, international men's day international uh, yeah. men's day happy international men's day good to be talking to you this morning